Good day YouTube, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of Cryptolite. Recently on our Telegram chat, there were some members who were very excited about the token MAN, which is the project Matrix AI Network. I didn't know much about this project, so I went to do some reading on it and then I also became very excited about this project. I think this is a project with the potential to be one of the best protocols in the market over the next couple of years with very big potential gains. So to find out why we are so bullish on Matrix, keep watching this video. The philosophy of the Matrix AI network is a philosophy from a well-known Chinese philosopher called Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu once said, the key to growth is the introduction of higher dimensions of consciousness into our awareness. And the higher dimension that Matrix wants to introduce into the crypto space to facilitate growth is artificial intelligence or AI. The current major problems of the blockchain platforms are fourfold. They are scalability, which is the speed of data processing and storage. Second is interoperability, which is the ease of communicating with other blockchains or legacy systems. The third is sustainability, which is a self-sustaining economy of the project. And the fourth is of course security, which is protection against hacking or dysfunction. All third generations platforms like Neo, Icon, uh, one chain etc try to address these four aspects to some degree but most platform projects will excel in one particular aspect and that one particular aspect will become their selling point or attractive features to potential users for example eos hpb iost they excel in speed scalability becomes their attractive feature icon one chain chain link ontology they excel in interoperability and that becomes their main selling feature so most blockchain platforms have one outstanding feature matrix though matrix is trying to be the best in every area a blockchain needs to be check this out for starters they are boasting that they will be able to achieve 1 million transactions per second that's far far ahead of almost every other blockchain platform most of the third generation blockchain platforms are only boasting 1 to 1000 to 2.5 thousand transactions per second at the moment. Some like NEO boasting that they can scale up to 10,000 transactions per second. A million transactions per second is super high. It will make it not only one of the fastest systems in the blockchain scene, it will make it one of the fastest systems in the world. Currently, only three other blockchains that I know of besides Matrix dares to both such speed and they are EOS, HPB and Credits. Matrix is also boasting that it will be the easiest platform to use because they are the only platform project in the whole blockchain arena where users can use smart contracts without knowing programming language. If this is true, they are opening a floodgate to a huge influx of users that blockchain has never seen before. They are boasting that they will have 350 times the number of users compared to Ethereum. And I think they calculated this based on the proportion of people in the world who know programming to those who don't. And Ethereum is the biggest platform currently having already 100 times more projects than the average platform. They are also boasting that because of the AI, they will be one of the most secure projects in the blockchain and they will have automatic evolution features, basically infinite self-upgrading. So this is a crazy promise, guys. If they can really achieve all of the above, they would easily be one of the best platforms in the crypto space. To find out how they plan to achieve this, let's take a deeper look at their tech. The first feature of their tech that I want to introduce to you is their consensus algorithm. Their consensus algorithm is actually a hybrid model of proof of stake as well as proof of work. So where in proof of work, every transaction is processed by all the nodes, in this consensus algorithm, the entire network is broken down into smaller clusters of nodes. Within each cluster of nodes, there is a proof of stake process that results in only one delegate node being selected. And the combination of these delegate nodes are the ones that actually do the actual proof of work mining. So this means that even though every node is involved in the process, very few nodes are actually doing the actual proof of work, which frees the rest of the nodes up to repeat the process and do more transactions simultaneously. 
Now, the transaction speed of any platform is heavily reliant on its consensus algorithm because this affects the latency of the throughput. In Matrix case, they are boasting that they will be able to reach 1 million transactions per second. The chance of a node being selected as a delegate node to do the proof of work will depend on the staking power of the node. So the more you stake, the higher the chance of you being selected. However, this is not the only mechanism behind the scenes. Even among those who are shortlisted, only a smaller number get chosen and this is based on random selection. The random selection prevents the people with the highest stakes from repeatedly getting chosen, which is what is happening in proof of stake. And this is this would result in the rich getting richer and a centralizing of the whole process. The actual mining is not available at the moment, but the team is working on it. Follow the channel for more information. The second piece of tech that I want to cover with you guys is their smart contracts. This feature is called deep learning based code generation for smart contracts. Let me explain what that means. Now, a significant advantage of Matrix is that the users of smart contracts no longer need to know how to do coding with a programming language. As a matter of fact, Matrix only requires the user to type in the purpose of the contract in natural language, meaning English, Japanese, the normal day-to-day -day language we use, and the AI will convert it into a smart contract. This technology is called deep learning. Now, deep learning technology is actually something that very big companies on the internet are already using. For example, Google and Yahoo. They are already using deep learning to assist in programming. The neural network of Matrix is the specific modification to this already existent deep learning technology to convert the plans to smart contracts. In other words, it's the translator to convert programming to smart contracts. In fact, smart contracts are actually easier to generate than normal programs because whilst with normal programming, you have infinite possibilities, at the moment with smart contracts, you only have about 40 to 60 programming patterns. So it's much, much easier to make a template for the AI to produce smart contracts. So this sound, this promise of matrix to allow users to use smart contracts without knowing programming it doesn't seem like an empty promise it seems like a tech that is very real and it's just around the corner if these features work out guys it will be an absolute game changer i can't even begin to imagine the impact it will have on blockchain just this one feature for this one project alone could open the door to mass adoption of blockchain technology the third tech feature that I want to share with you is about their security. The matrix is designed to boost the security of blockchain platforms to an unprecedented level. The overall security framework of matrix consists of four major components. The first is a rule based semantic and synthetic analysis. The second is a formal verification of smart contracts. The third is the AI based detection engine for security checking. And the fourth is a deep learning based platform for dynamic security verification. And I'm going to explain to you each one in simple terms. The first synthetic and semantic analysis. Think of this simply as a supervisor of the system that will check up on the nodes and the work done by the nodes and ensure that the standard of work done by all the members, the nodes, are roughly the same. So there's a bit of standard uh, quality control. The second is the formal verification of smart contracts. The best way to describe this is that even though smart contracts are supposed to be complete in what they do, under different circumstances, the same smart contract can behave differently. Sometimes this results in an abnormal execution or a loophole that can be exploited. Matrix AI then has a formal verification framework that will validate the security of smart contracts. The third is what we call an AI-based verification of smart contracts. How this verification differs from the previous formal verification is like this. Think of the formal verification as checking the actual equation of the smart contract, meaning 1 plus 1 must equal to 2. An AI-based verification, though, is a deep learning software that discovers the hidden intention of smart contracts. Remember when they are first making the smart contract with a deep learning tool, they are discovering the intention of the of the, the person who wants to create the content and then they come up with a smart contract based on the intention of it. So here as well, it's not actually checking the actual mechanics of the equation, it's checking that the intention behind the smart contracts is uh, fulfilled. So it's not a simple um, checking 1 plus 1 equals to 2, it's more like a detective who is 
questioning the smart contract, asking them where they are going and checking that their actions are consistent with the original intention. The fourth security tool they have is what is known as dynamic verification and security optimization based on deep neural network. Okay, quite a mouthful. Let me explain in simple terms what this means. The above three, the first three methods of security are what we call static security, meaning that those features act on the existing smart contracts or the core components of the system, okay, the raw components of the system. A dynamic security refers to loopholes that can only be exposed during the actual execution of the smart contract. Think of it like the previous three were inspecting the parts of a car engine before putting it together, and this dynamic verification is the actual test drive of the engine. The famous DAO attack that Ethereum suffered was an example of a dynamic vulnerability. So to address this problem, Matrix employs two different approaches. One is known as a generative adversarial network, and the other is known as a distributed concurrence-based dynamic model. We won't go into detail because it's too technical, but for now, just know that they have different ways of testing the actual functioning of a smart contract. It's a bit like a virtual machine um, function. So with all of these layers running on the AI or through the AI, you can see why Matrix is able to boast that they will bring an unprecedented level of security into the blockchain platform arena. The next tech that I want to share with you from Matrix is their highly flexible blockchain architecture. This feature addresses the issues of interoperability and they achieve this by two means. The first is known as the multi-chain structure of Matrix. Now, the Matrix blockchain will host multiple different data chains. Different data chains will support different data from different blockchains. So there will be one data chain to support Bitcoin, one data chain to support the Ethereum data, and then the two chains can then exchange data and tokens through Matrix secure smart contracts. In addition to having multiple data chains, they also ensure that there is a complex three-tier security system which involves encryption of data in between the different data chains. The second feature they have is what is known as the natural evolution of blockchain parameters. Uh, now, this is one of the most impressive part of matrix tech to me. A blockchain typically has a multitude of parameters such as a block size, permission algorithm, consensus mechanism, etc. Right? And the configuration of these parameters has a significant impact on the overall performance of the blockchain. It is generally impossible to choose an optimal group of parameters for all situations. You have to try and adapt uh, if you want to be optimal. However, a dramatic change of these parameters will increase great risk in terms of hard fork. So when you reach a situation where you have different users for the same um, platform or the same blockchain, but you can't come to a consensus in terms of the optimal parameters to use, then what happens is that there will be a separation and you will split into two and that's called a fork. A reinforcement learning based parameter optimization engine, okay, a very fancy word, basically the AI that is embedded onto matrix, continuously learns the long-term rewards of fine-tuning various parameters. And after learning it, the network can then generate parameter tuning decisions given the current structure and the environment of a given blockchain. So not only is the AI continually fine-tuning it, uh, to continually change it to meet the requirements is also learning what is the best way to do so. And since the matrix chain can learn to optimize itself, the whole process is basically designated as a natural evolution. So basically, this network is designed to continually grow itself and theoretically, matrix will never need to have a fault because it will always be the best possible version of itself. Now, the last piece of tech that I want to cover with you and this Initially sounds a bit scary, but let me bring you through it because it's a very, very important piece of their um, technology. It's called the proof of work with the Markov chain Monte Carlo or MCMC computation. Now, <laughs> when I first saw this bit in the white paper, I actually skipped it. Right? I thought this is getting too technical and I wasn't going to cover it with you guys. But then I did a little bit of learning just for my own interest and I was blown away by what I found. You don't need to know every bit of the mathematical equation, but I'm going to show you something here that will uh, show you a very unique aspect of matrix. Now in proof of work, mining is done using what is known as hash functions. 
Hash functions is basically a cryptographic process that has many features that make it suitable for mining. Example, it cannot be replicated, it's easy to calculate, etc. Right? Now, MCMC also has suitable features that make it suitable for mining. We're not going to actually look at the actual mathematical equations uh, because I'm not smart enough to do them. But what I want to point out for you here is that hash functions, which is what the proof of work in the blockchain, what we currently use, okay, hash functions are cryptographic meaning they are only relevant to crypto projects. So even though the entire system of Bitcoin is doing the same transaction on every single node, almost nothing is really being achieved. Only one very lucky node will find a Bitcoin. Everyone else has basically wasted their time and energy. Now, MCMC is not a cryptographic function. It is a sampling or statistical procedure. Now, because it uses a form of computation that is useful for almost any statistical procedure, the entire access processing power of the system can be outsourced to other projects to provide AI computation. So energy is not lost. In fact, it is harnessed and it can be sold or lent to other projects to do other useful things. So this is a technology that no other blockchain has used. Now, there's a short half a minute clip from their intro video that I just want to show you so that you know I'm not making this up. 3. Public Welfare Calculation I think you do not know. 70% of the world's computing power are used in a variety of encrypted currency mining. In my system, the power will be used to do all kinds of meaningful things. At the same time, each person's personal equipment such as mobile phones, tablet that can access the network in the spare time for a variety of social welfare projects to calculate, while access to the corresponding benefits. Now, in a recent live stream with Box Mining, their chief scientist, Dr. Deng, also confirmed that because the company will get an additional source of income for the computation work that they will lend to others, they will also reward miners with part of their income. So miners get two forms of income, one from proof of work itself and the other just from passive income from um, lending their uh, computation energy to the whole system. So this is a very great idea and a very great uh, consensus system because when in traditional mining, the bigger the network, the more wastage there is. In MCMC, the bigger the network, the more powerful the AI computation becomes. And then it harnesses that energy to benefit both the scientific society, but it also offers a secondary reward to both the company and the miners. Now, unfortunately, Dr. Deng did admit that the traditional CPU and even GPUs won't be very effective in mining metrics because the process is different. They are doing a mathematical sampling, not hash functions. So the team is actually designing their own hardware chip for mining, but it won't be out this year. I think the prototype is out, but it won't actually be released and sold this year, but maybe sometime next year. So at this point, just looking at the tech, I'm really quite blown away by this project. Conceptually, they possibly have one of the best, if not the best platform tech that I've come across. And it also has so many impressive features. Now let's take a look at the team to see if the team has the capabilities to pull this off. When you first look at the team, it will strike you as unusual that actually their CEO, Owen Tao, is right at the bottom. Usually the CEO will be at the top, right? And uh, these four pictures that are represented here are basically the different team leaders of the project. Um, but as you go through the resume, you realize that the reason the CEO is not at the top is because the guy who is anchoring this whole project is actually the guy right at the top here whose name is Dr. Steve Deng and he's the chief AI scientist. I'm going to read to you a bit of his resume. So he is Professor Deng is an associate professor at Tsinghua University, which is one of China's top universities. Prior to Tsinghua, he was working with Magma Design Automation as a consulting technical staff. Okay, he received his PhD from Carnegie University, and his research interests include machine learning industry data analytics. He has been the PI or co-PI for numerous national level research projects, and this is China level research projects, so not a small country. And since 2016, he has also been the vice principal architect of the China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation for high speed trains project. He's written a book called Structural IC Design and High Level Synthesis, which was adopted as the textbook of IC design by Tsinghua and many universities. 
His work on deep learning based image detection was ranked number one in many prestigious challenge. He is the author and co-author of over 50 papers. He has also received multiple awards, including a Best Paper Award on International Conference on Computer Design 2013, a NVIDIA Partnership Professor Award and a Tsinghua Key Talent Award. And he is not the only impressive one. The next person is a guy known as Bill Lee, who is a leading expert of communications and IC design. He's also a major contributor of 4G, 5.5G and 5G standards of China. He was the chief architect of China's first Wi-Fi transceiver IC. And as a co-PI, he led the design of the dispatch communication system of China's first aircraft carrier. His work on communication IC designs won numerous national awards. His book Communication IC Design was the best-selling textbook in this area and is still used by many prestigious universities. And you can go down um, the list and just read the resumes of the other two and it's equally as impressive. So these guys are not your average young entrepreneur blockchain team. They are heavyweights who are mature, experienced, and world leaders in their fields. If anyone can pull this off, you would believe that such a team would be able to do it. Next is their board of advisors. This is a list, again, of very impressive individuals. I mean, the advisors are basically the guys that have impressed the already very impressive team that we just saw. So for the sake of time, I won't read out their resumes, but do go through it in your own time. It's quite a mind-blowing set of resumes with multiple national awards, international successes, working experience in Yahoo, Goldstone, etc. So overall, just looking at the team as well as their advisors, I must say this is a very, very impressive team. Their partners and associations include Hyperledger and the Linux Foundation. Well, I guess Hyperledger and Linux come together. Uh, and a number of other Chinese companies that I'm gonna admit I don't really recognize. Their strategic contributors, whom I'm assuming is the same as angel investors, include a number of capital groups. So that's always a good sign because it means that at the industrial level, professional investors, uh, there's a lot of professional investment groups who are also paying attention to this project. This is their roadmap. In September of this year, this, that will launch their Age of Genesis, which is basically their private chain or interchain transactions. And in December, we will see the launch of Age of Speed, which is Lightspeed Network, Proof of Stake Plus, Proof of Work Consensus, etc. So it's really in this stage, in December of this year, that we will really start to see them achieve those high transaction speeds that they are boasting about. So definitely keep your eye on it then. And then the whole roadmap continues all the way to 2020 January, which is when we will finally see mining release. So unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do mining in the next year. Now, one potentially important news that was not on their roadmap, but it was the news of them being uh, listed on upcoming exchanges. So this is a bit shout out to James L on our Telegram chat for sharing this article. And somewhere in the article, I'm going to read out for you, it says this. At the same time, progress has been made in negotiating with some of the top exchanges around the globe. Matrix is likely to be listed on two of the top five exchanges in the English-speaking world and several of the largest exchanges in Japan and Korea. So no time frames given yet, but we can expect this to happen sometime soon. Currently, uh, Matrix is only listed on Ether Delta, Gate.io, and IDEX. These are very, very small exchanges. They are not even on KuCoin yet. And I think that is one of the big reasons why they are so under the radar, especially to the Western world. We all know the Binance effect or the effect of being listed on the major listing. A lot of awareness comes in and the price token goes up. So we can expect the price to rise significantly over the next few weeks to next few months. In fact, it might never be as cheap as it is now ever again. Now, when Matrix first hit the exchanges, they hit the exchanges at $1.07. Currently, they are now sitting at $0.74. Cents. So they've actually fallen below opening price by more than 25%. That's huge in the crypto market pricing. And I think it's a shame that the project's fallen so much because a project of this quality with such a team behind them certainly deserves a much higher price point. We certainly see uh, much weaker projects have a much better run than them in the early days. But I guess the fact that they've fallen so far also means that it's a very big discount at the moment. If you look at the graph on the whole, it is quite a volatile graph. Okay, There isn't any 
clear strong line of resistance. You might be able to speculate a few lines of resistance and support, but there really isn't any clear pattern on lines, uh, simply because I think they don't have the volume behind them. What I find surprising is that they have quite a big community with over 16,000 Telegram users. So, you know, there's quite a lot of interest in them. But what I think is happening, and this may be just my speculation, is that many people are seeing the potential in um, gains in this project. But because at the moment it's so underrated and it's out of the top 100 coins, many people are being um, cautious and conservative, especially in the recent bear market. So a lot of their token investors are only putting a little bit of their portfolio in it which is why even though their telegram community is almost as big as the icon telegram community their price is so much lower and so much more volatile the other consideration i'm having is that the man token has only ever seen a bear market he hit the markets on the 29th of june so this is right in the peak of the bear market or the bottom of the bear market and we haven't had a chance to see it um have a bull market or bull run, which is where a lot of uh, potential investors start looking at small altcoins and uh, there's a lot more positivity in the market to invest in slightly more risky um, investments. Currently, it's ranked 118 with a market cap of over 110 million, just over 110 million. It's not on any big exchanges. I think it's got a lot of room to grow. I like this project a lot because one, they've got a solid team and they're aiming to be one of the top five fastest platform in the market. Also, they are boasting that they can be the most secure platform, the easiest to access, the only platform where a user can use smart contracts without needing programming skills. It's self-evolving, so no forking ever. There's a lot to like about this project and not a lot to dislike. I try very hard to be critical with them because I like to offer a balanced views in these reviews, but I really found nothing to fault this project on. I personally think that the um, underrated Chinese platform projects like Matrix and HPB have a chance to challenge Ethereum's current market cap one day. <laughs> I have to throw HPB in there because HPB is my favorite platform. And personally, in my own head, every time I compare or do a review on a new platform, I tend to compare it to HPB. But so far, only Matrix is the only platform that comes close to HPB, in my opinion. If you want to learn more about another good platform, so do check out our HPB video. But look, coming back to Matrix and Ethereum, Ethereum's current market cap is over 50 billion right now. At the, its peak, somewhere in the, uh, January, Ethereum's market cap went up to just over 80 billion, I believe. Now, if Matrix ever got to Ethereum's current market cap of 50 billion, okay, that would be 500x gains, okay, not 500%, 500x gains, which is 50,000%. That is so ridiculously bullish that I can't even put it as a thumbnail because people would immediately dismiss it as an unrealistic shilling. Yet I think in the next few years, it is very, very possible for a project like Matrix to hit that kind of market cap. Once blockchain hits mass adoption and a lot of projects um, start coming into blockchain, you know, I think a lot of good platforms out there will see 5x, 10x, even 20x gains, but a couple or handful of very outstanding platforms like Matrix will have a real chance to gather a very large part of the market and challenge Ethereum's current market cap, possibly even overtaking Ethereum. And I look forward to that day, I believe in it, and when the day comes, I'll be very happy because I'll be holding a bag of MAN tokens. So that's it guys, I hope you found this video helpful. This is a project that we like very much, but as always, we're not professionals, this is not financial advice, this is just me sharing with you my thoughts on my own crypto journey. Um, always make sure you do your homework and make your own decisions. If you like this video, do give us a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content. Also, do join our Telegram group to make sure you don't miss out on any great recommendations or updates like this one. Our Telegram link is in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic day and we will catch you guys again very soon.